Welcome back, I'm Streaky. Today I'm going to answer one of the most asked questions I get on Q&As, which I did last Friday. Thanks for turning up, those people that did. In fact, it was Monday, not Friday. Where is my life going with this lockdown? But this question is about my mastering chain. What comes first, EQ or compressor? So by the end of this video, you will know exactly where to put the EQ or compressor. Does one come before the other? What is the point of putting one before the other? But because it's Monday, I want to keep this kind of brief and quick because you've got to get on with your life, working week and all that. So it's a little two minute. Let's see if I can stop shouting and actually condense what I've got to say into two minutes. That will be a challenge in itself. But this is how I approach the mastering chain. Right, let's set the timer off. Okay, off we go. So my approach to setting up my mastering chain is exactly the way I've always done it when I had hardware. I like to keep things in order so that it doesn't change all the time. I don't change the sound. I get a consistent finish. So if you are in the box, it's, it's kind of the same as if you're out of the box too. And you can obviously have a mixture of the two, but that doesn't answer the question. Does EQ come first or compression? Okay, well, compressors I tend to use more for flavor. So usually the first thing I go into is something just tuby to warm things up, to get things going. Going. Then I go into an EQ, which is going to be kind of a broad EQ to kind of flatten the sound out. Something like a Bax or something where it's just, you know, like a pull tech or something where I can just really wide bells. I can like lift up the top or the bottom just to get some shape. So what I'm doing first of all is I'm getting color, I'm getting shape into it. Once I've got that basic part done, then I'll go into a more detailed EQ to kind of do any anything that needs taking out. So I'll have an EQ there. Then I'll probably go into a compressor just to kind of push it all together to get a kind of gluey sound because I like that. But then I'll have an EQ after that to open it up again. So I might have brought it all down with a, with a compressor like that and then open it up with an EQ afterwards. And then I might go into like a multi-band if I need to. Um, just to sort of tighten up areas or maybe a de at the top. And then if that has taken too much off, then I'll go in with another EQ to kind of counteract that. But when I say I go into all these things, I don't do that on every single track. You shouldn't do that on every track. You do what the track needs. So the point of the matter is, it doesn't matter if you've got one before or after the other. Usually I've got an EQ after a compressor because the compressor is push the sound together. So I really want to open that up before I go into the final limiter because that's always the thing at the end of the chain. I want it nice and open. I want the dynamics there because I'm hitting a limiter, which is essentially a compressor right at the end. So that's going to push the sound down. So before I get into that, I want to make sure that I've got it nice and spiky with some EQ. So to sum it up, go into an EQ to get the balance right, just to get the top and the bottom to sort of balance off, really wide shelvy EQ. Then go into something maybe to warm it up, you know, just to get a, a more of a sound. And, and then I'll go into another EQ to really strip the kind of areas that I want to do, sort of to do more detailed EQ. Then I'll go into a compressor to take all that strippiness and pull it all together. And then I might need to go into another EQ to open it up. That's kind of essentially in and out, in and out, in and out. So I hope I've done that in two minutes. Probably not. Please like this video if you want more stuff like this. I hope that's helped you in some way with your mastering chain this week when you're mastering your own music or if you're mastering for someone else. Make sure you watch the video that's coming up next. It's me mastering a basic setup for you and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers for watching. Bye.